Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this animated moving texture background using a stock photo in Adobe After Effects CC. So to begin, I have After Effects open, and I'll just click New Composition to create a new composition. And I'm going to leave it at the standard 1920 by 1080 HD size. And also important is the duration. This is how long you want the sequence to be. So it might be 30 seconds by default or something but you can make it one minute, two minute, however long you need. So I'll keep it at one minute, press OK, and it's gonna create our blank background. Now, first thing before we load in our texture is I'm just gonna choose a solid color background to start working with. So I'm gonna to go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm going to choose whatever color I want. We can also make it into a gradient later, but I'll choose a, a bit of a pastel royal blue. So I'll press OK, and now we have our blue background, and we want to apply some animated texture on top of it. So if you go online to any free stock photo website, like Pixabay or Unsplash, and just search for paper or paper texture, you should be able to have plenty of different options for free stock photos. Once you find one you like, you can save it to your computer and just drag it into this project media section, or you can go to import file and choose it from here. So I found this one and it's gonna open up on this new layer just to show me what I'm working with. But I'm gonna make sure I go back to my paper animation composition. And once the file is imported, I can drag it in on top of our background solid that we made. So you could see the good thing about some of these paper textures is they've been scanned in a pretty high resolution. So we have some working room for things to move around and still not touch the edge. Now in this case, this isn't even the most perfect example because we have this crease right in the middle that's pretty noticeable. So what we wanna do is make it seem like it's randomly generated texture almost. So I'm gonna find a section here. I'll actually rotate it a bit. I'm gonna open up the transformation menu. I'm gonna rotate things a bit and I'm going to find a section that's pretty smooth, nothing too noticeable so that we can trick the eye into just seeing a bunch of random texture. I'm also going to increase the scale a bit. So we have some working room around the edges to move around. And this looks pretty good. Another thing you can also do is adjust the color and contrast of this. So in the effects panel, you can do something like hue and saturation. Let's say I didn't want any of this brownish color to influence our texture. I can just turn the saturation all the way down. And let's also say I wanted to adjust the contrast a lot. I can do something like curves or levels. So let's try curves in this case. And I can add a bit more contrast in there to just pull out exactly which part of the texture I want. And then how we're gonna apply the texture onto the color or whatever background we have is by setting it to a blending mode like overlay or in this case, screen. You can try a bunch of different ones. But I think that looks pretty good even at a default. We've made our basic textured background, but now we want to animate it. That's what the whole project is about, is making this animated looping texture. So what I'll do is head over to the transformation keyframes on this texture, and we've already put it into kind of a good position. And under the position keyframe, I'm gonna hold the option key and press that keyframe, and it should open up the expression panel. And that's what's so awesome about After Effects is it has powerful expressions that can randomly generate things based on math and formulas. So I'm just gonna clear this transform position one. And if you hit this little play drop down arrow, the cool part is After Effects gives you a bunch of different ones so you don't have to memorize all of them. And I'm gonna click this wiggle one, but I'm gonna delete all of these extra parameters and we're basically just gonna use the frequency and amplitude ones. So the frequency is basically how fast or how often it's gonna move around. So something like two or three is gonna give us decent movement and then we'll press comma. And then the amplitude is how far it can skew the position. So something like 10 will be not very much at all, whereas something like 500 will be pretty far. So if I press play on this, you'll be able to see it's wiggling things around at a random amount. I just don't want it to wiggle too strong to the point where you could see the edge. 
So in that case, I'm just gonna play around with it and lower the amount of things. You can also adjust the original position or anchor point. But in this style, we don't really wanna see the texture moving. We wanna feel like we're getting a new frame of texture every so often. So I'm actually gonna go back into the expression panel and above that wiggle, I'm gonna add another little expression called posterize time. And I'm gonna put parentheses and in here you can choose to posterize the time or the frames that are shown to a certain amount. So for example, if I put one, that means we're only gonna see one frame of this image every second. So one, two, three, you see it's switching pretty slowly. Now if we do something like four, it's gonna switch four times per second. So I think four is a pretty solid number and it makes it look a lot more randomly generated. Your eyes can't really tell things are moving. And you just wanna pay attention for kind of problem areas, I'll call them recognizable spots or creases in the image that are gonna give it away. From here, you can just fine tune the anchor point and the original position and even the original scale, just so you really get it rotating around in the texture area that you want. And you can also adjust the, you know, the curves, the contrast, the colors of things. The possibilities are super flexible, but that's how you can use some cool combinations of expressions in After Effects. So you don't have to do a whole bunch of tedious keyframing. And I think it's a really useful technique to keep in your toolbox for any future projects. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all my future videos. You can check out more tutorials over on my channel, playlist and page. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Just to Know D Show if you want to reach out to me directly. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.